Hey, I'm Carbo Brotherhood. I'm Chris Nelson, President at M Carbo. I'm really excited to introduce the most comprehensive video that we have yet for the Keltec Sub 2000. The Keltec Sub 2000 has been by far our favorite firearm. We've got well over a dozen upgrades for the Sub at this point. We're really excited to do more for it. I'm really excited to see what Keltec continues to do for the Sub 2000. Real big fans of Keltec and what they're doing with the Sub and a wide variety of innovative platforms that they have out there. We've communicated with them as well, and just some of the parts that we produce, they also have in their shooting team rifles and they're using in competitions, which has been really exciting and really rewarding to see that it's gone to that level. Not to mention the M-Carbo Brotherhood, the Facebook group, almost a thousand members on there at this point. It's great to see guys helping each other within that group. There's a ton of experience within it, and there's so many guys within minutes helping each other when they have a question during the installation process, which is awesome. I'll see you at the end, and we'll talk about the results. Okay, here it is. As of July 2017, this is everything that we make for your Sub 2000. So whether you want to do a little bit or a lot, here it is. So I'm going to run through it real fast as to what we've got here in front of us, and then we'll do an installation of everything, plus use the tools and just demonstrate what you can do to your Sub. Now it's highly recommended across the board from everyone that's been with us from the beginning that you do everything all at once. And what they mean by that is that you do all the internal upgrades one time so you only have to tear your part, your sub, one time. So it's really a nice time saver but the other caveat to that is those guys that have done it maybe five or six times have a ton of experience and these guys are now doing installations for their friends or neighbors or family members, whatever. I mean they've got it down to a science. So. Either way, you're good. Whatever you want to do, it's entirely up to you, but we highly recommend doing all the internal upgrades at once, and that's how I've got them laid out here. So you can see I've got the trigger spring kit, the two triggers, the trigger guard, the screw upgrade kit, the grip pin upgrade kit, the stainless steel feed ramp, and then the two multi-mag variations here. So these seven upgrades, and I say seven because with the triggers you've got the option between a flat and a curved trigger, and then with the magazine release you've got the option between the multi-mag and the Glock, just depending on what type of variation Sub 2000 you have. So real fast, I'm going to run through it. This is the Keltec Sub 2000 trigger spring kit, which is the 50% reduction in your trigger pull, a nice clean crisp trigger pull which is amazing and has been the beginning for a lot of us and then the target triggers you've got a flat trigger option which you can see here and then you've got a curved trigger option which you can see here pretty standard they're both 6061 aircraft grade aluminum and black hard coat anodized for superior dependability durability lifetime protection the aluminum trigger guard is a great replacement and a matching component to the triggers so when you replace that plastic trigger on your sub you're eliminating that flex in the trigger so it helps make the trigger feel more crisp with the plastic trigger, it tends to actually feel like the length of pull is much longer than it actually is because that flex in the trigger. So anything that we have to use like a lever, if you will, it's going to have that flex, it's going to have that continuation effect where it's actually bending under pressure. So with the triggers, it's an obvious upgrade, a nice crisp aluminum trigger for a nice lighter trigger pull feels phenomenally different. So with that we've also got the trigger guard upgrade to match the trigger and also when you use that trigger guard like a lever to fold your sub in half it doesn't flex, it doesn't feel like it's going to break. These are actually wider than the factory and tighter tolerances so it doesn't slop around. A lot of time and engineering went into these parts and that's why a lot of people tend to like them in the brotherhood so we really appreciate that support which has been phenomenal. Now here we've got a matching combination. We've got carbon steel screws and carbon steel grip pins. So in your sub you've got bare aluminum grip pins that will strip out and when you take your sub apart for the first time you'll notice that you may have a screw in there that just continues to spin freely and it doesn't come out. That's because it's stripped out in the bare aluminum pins. To solve that problem we've got the carbon steel grip pins. These are black oxide coated, prevent rust. Same with the carbon steel screws that are matching to the carbon steel grip pins. These are black oxide coated, premium finish, look amazing in your sub too by the way. Whereas the factory ones aren't as shiny, aren't as nice deep black, the factory ones are kind of a gray. So these are a great aesthetic improvement, also a functional improvement matching carbon steel threads. This says Gen 2 on it so if you have a Gen 1 and you replace these grip pins which are compatible you actually will get the Gen 2 screws. So in effect you'll have Gen 2 screws and Gen 2 grip pins. They're completely interchangeable with the Gen 1 and the Gen 2 versions. The stainless steel feed ramp for your Sub 2000, a phenomenal improvement over the plastic feed ramp. Plastic feed ramp when it gets damaged 
damaged, it'll actually tend to wear even further. So if you get a malfunction, if you get a jam, it may scar the actual feed ramp. And after it starts to scar and continue to wear, you're going to get more malfunctions because the geometry has changed. We actually took it a step further and improved the geometry to help improve the feeding operations of the sub. So when you get your new stainless steel feed ramp, we highly recommend that you polish it. So we also have a polishing kit to go with it. It's got three felt shaped bullet tip Dremel bits, and then it's got a jar of flitz polish and a set of nitrile gloves. So we highly recommend doing the polishing to your feed ramp before you do the installation. You can't do the polishing once it's installed, so we just really recommend you do it now. Spend the 30 minutes doing the polishing. It's well worth it because even though this is a machine part and it looks fantastic and it's better, tighter tolerances, and we've improved the geometry, anything that's machined is going to have these tiny little hills and valleys is how I describe it. Kind of like on your knuckles there. You see hills and valleys. So you've got to eliminate those microscopic hills and valleys. And what you're going to do with these felt bits and that flitz polish is you're actually going to smooth it all out till it's one smooth, clean finish. And it's going to look like a chrome rim or a mag wheel on a sports car. It's going to look amazing. It's going to improve the function of your firearm, the reliability and the longevity. It's a must. And that's something here with all these upgrades. A lot of them are small individual parts, but it's going to actually promote and improve the longevity of the sub. So even machined extended magazine releases for your sub. So if you have a multi-mag version, this is yours here. You've got the two holes here to bolt up your steel mag catch for whatever magazine you're running. And if you have a multi-mag, you can run one magazine one day and another the next. It's completely universal and it's constantly changing. kel just added a few new mags to it. So go ahead and take a look. If you've got a Glock, we've got one complete solid piece here for your Glock. And that's the great thing is that we've improved the function of the mag release by adding this extension with nice little ridges here for grip and dexterity. These components that I just went over are all the internal components for your sub and we highly recommend doing them all at once for that night and day effect. It's going to be a phenomenal difference when you go out and shoot your sub after doing the installation. So we highly recommend doing all of that at once. If you do get the pro bundle, you're going to get a majority of that. The only thing you'll be missing is the stainless steel feed ramp and you'll be missing the mag release. So you can add those to that bundle and then you'll have all the internal components as well as the tools. Now the remainder of the components here you could add later or you could just do everything all at once and get an extreme night and day effect which is awesome which is fun too so if you're doing the installation it might make more sense to just get it all one and done. Now these charging handle covers if you're going to actually just keep the factory charging handle this is great it helps actually add some diameter to that factory charging handle and some grip so highly recommend it it's an easy quick upgrade especially if you're just kind of dipping your toe in the water with some up grades might as well now this is easy I'm not going to demo the installation on this but you just drop it in a cup of hot water it heats up nice soft and rubbery and it'll slip right on make sure you wring it out so there's no moisture inside of it but you wring it out dry it and then slip it right on your charging handle and then it'll harden up once it dries which is fantastic next up is a double finger charging handle so I've got three of them here in front of you as you can see so I've got one it's standard black chrome this is how they come now there's a little tiny wire mark here you'll see from the plating when they actually hang these they dip them into the black chrome this is actually a 45 minute process for the black chrome so that's just something I want you to be aware of that there is a tiny little wire mark there and they are wire hung and dipped I won't rust there's no problem with it it's just something that I wanted you to be aware of also here double finger charging handle with the two charging handle grips this is great it's actually the best of both worlds so you've got two grips that won't wear out ever and you've got nice thick charging handle nice and fat in terms of surface area to grip so you don't have to worry about trying to find a little tiny charging handle it's right there ready to go the other thing, we've got a custom synthetic dip here. So it's actually hand dipped in synthetic rubber and then there's a gloss coating that goes on top of it. This looks premium. This is amazing. The finish, the quality, and the grip, not to mention the real awesome dexterity you're going to have manipulating that charging handle. It's pretty fluid, pretty functional. So you've got a variety of options with the double finger charging handle. We've also got one other charging handle in the works now. A lot of you guys are already aware of it. Next up is the kel Sub 2000 Single Point Sling Mount. You've got QD functionality and it's ambidextrous. So whether you want to use your single point sling that's got the QD swivel on it or hook swivel, it'll function with both. So and you've got left and right hand shooters, doesn't matter. You can switch it around. It's amazing. It bolts right onto the collar. And we'll demonstrate that. Next up, we got tools. We got the Sub 2000 Armors Wrench, which is for the Gen 2 collar. Sorry, Gen 1 owners, but if you've got a Gen 1, likely you won't need this anyway. You're going to just use a brass punch, or you're going to use a strap wrench, or you might be able to just get it off by hand. They're not 
as hard to get off. With the Gen 2 you've got these collars that are held on only by Loctite 380. There's no threads under the Gen 2 collar. So this is a must for the Gen 2. And then you've got your 40 cal thread protector, your 9 millimeter thread protector, and then you've got your E-clip removal tool. Now this removal tool is to get it started and then you take your pliers, pull it the rest of the way off. Great tool, fantastic accessory to have for your Sub 2000. It's just one of those things that if you've got a tool set for your Sub, you've got to have it in there. Also we've got the Sub 2000 assembly tool. This is for pushing the hammer back. It's birch wood. It's the actual exact diameter and length that you need to do it quickly and efficiently rather than run around looking for a stick or something not abrasive to stick up the guts of your sub 2000. So very inexpensive tool but very handy as well and designed for the sub. Machine cut as well. This isn't just something that is snapped in two. Also we've got Loctite 380 which is what kel uses from the factory. It's an instant adhesive designed to adhere polymer and metal. So this is exactly what's needed. This is like super glue on steroids right here. This stuff is fast and it is instant and it will work. You can't use red Loctite or blue Loctite on your sub collar. It just won't work. It's going to move around. Especially if you've got the single point sling mount, this thing's just going to spin around on you because the collar's not going to be stationary. So to get that collar secured to the polymer, it's Loctite 380. What the factory uses, we might as well use it as well. And then this T-handle wrench is awesome. It's got a nice flywheel effect. It's got a weighted handle up here with some nice grip and it just does a number on removing those screws. So if you're doing some installations on your sub, nice thing to have. And if you've got these tools, it's nice to have a kit. Put them in a bag and hang on to them. So whenever you do any upgrades to your sub, you've got them right there. Easy to find, easy to access. Also the Super Lube, synthetic grease with PTFE, which PTFE is Teflon. It's a Teflon grease, great for putting on the actual sear and hammer engagement surface. It just helps with the lubricity, helps decrease the friction between the sear and the hammer, further decreasing the trigger pull weight. So it's something that we strive for. It might as well add it since we're already in there. It's a nice little way to get a little extra out of our trigger pull. And then we've got two 2.5 millimeter Allen keys. These are great for removing any sort of stripped out factory screws in those aluminum studs. So you need two to work on opposite ends usually to help get them out. So all in all guys, there it is. There's a overview and explanation, a little lengthy, but that's what it is as of July 2017 that we've got here in the Mcarbo House of Upgrades for the Sub 2000. Thank you Mcarbo Brotherhood for all your help, support and input. We've got more on the way for the Sub. Before we go any further, let's check our firearms together, make sure they're clear, check the chamber, check the bolt face, check the magazine well. This firearm's clear. Let's take a couple factory trigger pull readings and see what we're starting with. Nine pounds even. Let's take one more to confirm. Let's take one more to confirm. Eight pounds, 12 ounces. So eight and three quarter, nine pound trigger pull. Tools needed for this build, flathead screwdriver, needle nose pliers, small, medium and large punch, razor blade, sub 2000 assembly dowel, T-handle, 2.5 millimeter hex key, Loctite 380, sub 2000 armor's wrench, synthetic grease with PTFE, two 2.5 millimeter hex keys, and as always guys, make sure we're an iPro. So like every one of these installations, we start by field stripping it. It's easy if you just fold it in half, push down on the table, and just push through on that buttstock pin, remove the pin, remove the buffer, remove the buttstock, go ahead and collapse it now, go ahead and pull back on the charging handle, pull the recoil spring out, pull the factory charging handle out, go ahead and slide the bolt out, and just keep in mind it goes like this, so you got your bolt head here and the bolt, they go together like puzzle piece almost, so we'll set that aside. Now we're going to go ahead and remove the collar on the sub. Take your collar removal tool on your Sub 2000 Armors wrench. Slide it right on. Get yourself a little leverage there. Alright. Nice. Oh man, that's so much easier than how we used to do it with the punch set and the hammer. And once it's broken loose, you're golden. Slides right off. So there's threads on the collar, but there's no threads on here. Not a big surprise to most of us that have disassembled these. But this is the all-encompassing video here now, so bear with me for you guys that have done this quite a few times. We're getting to it. We're getting to the feed ramp. Go ahead and remove the screws. 
helps if you got this T-handle. Uh oh, might have one stripped here. Yep. A little bit. So we'll be replacing these screws and grip pins. This is going to be a big installation here. It's kind of cool to see it all taking place at one time. This is a ton of parts. All right, got all the screws and washers out. Go ahead and just fold it here. Now, got to remove this cross bolt safety. So you take your armor's wrench here. Now we're going to remove the cross bolt safety, starting with the ejection port side. Just take the T-handle, place it underneath the cross bolt safety. It'll keep that safety from pushing through on itself. And then take your armor's wrench, the E-clip working end, and go ahead and get it started. All right? See, I actually can rock it off. All right? You can see if you rotate it just right, you can rock it right off. So, pops right off like that. Now, just be careful not to scratch up your polymer. Okay? And then we're going to go ahead and step out on the other side. Now, on the non ejection port side, there's going to be a little detent and spring. Okay? So, we're going to start just by barely pushing on this thing. If you do too much, the thing will come flying out. So we locate where the detent is. There it is right there. You can see it. So just get your finger over top of it, okay? And go ahead and just push through and then let it just kind of fall out of there, right? There's the detent. And that spring will be right behind it, right there. So we got the spring and detent out. Don't have to worry about those flying across the room now. And we're going to do the same on this side. So grab your T-handle and put it underneath that cross bolt safety. It'll help put some pressure on it so that it won't push its way through the opposite side. And then we're going to go ahead and take the working end on that wrench. And we're going to rotate. Clips right off. Just want to keep that cross bolt safety from spinning around on you. Now, you can see that this is mostly off. So if you're at this point, it's just as easy to take your needle nose pliers, get a little bite on it, and there you go. So, the E-clip removal tool, it's not perfect, it is a fixed dimension, and these E-clips do contract and expand, so it does get it started. So if you have to, you can just take your needle nose pliers and pull it off the rest of the way, or you can work it off like I demonstrated on the first one there. So either way, get the E-clips off, and then we're going to remove cross bolt safety. Now go ahead and orient your sub, ejection port side facing up, take your flathead screwdriver, we're going to work our way around and separate the two trigger assembly halves. So taking your flathead, go ahead and start at the top, and start prying a little bit of space in between the polymer. Just be careful not to damage it. There is a little grip snap down here, so that might hang you up a little bit. And trying it. You may start hearing stuff snap, pop, move out of place. Not a big deal. Don't worry about it. We're going to go through it item by item. So go ahead and remove this portion of the trigger assembly here. Now you can see we've got a bit of a mess here. Here's your cross bolt safety. Go ahead and set that aside. Now what you saw flying here is your trigger linkage. So now let's take an up close look at the disassembly here. So you got your trigger guard, your trigger, your trigger return spring, your trigger bar, you got your sear here, your hammer's tucked in here under the receiver. Let's go ahead and start pulling things out. You can go ahead and remove your factory mag release, set that to the side. Now we're going to go ahead and pull up on our trigger bar here and trigger. Now this trigger hinge pin, this silver pin, go ahead and put that back in the grip if it came out. That should stay right there. Now, we're going to take a look at our trigger 
right here. So we got our plastic trigger, we've got our trigger return spring here. You notice the long leg of the trigger return spring interacts with this tab on the trigger bar. That's important. We're going to go over that again here shortly. And here's your trigger bar. So we go ahead and just set this assembly aside. It helps to keep some of these sub components intact because there's no reason to make it any more difficult than it has to be. Then go ahead and remove our trigger guard. Just pull up on it, right? And there's a spring. Go ahead and set these two components aside, keep them together. Now, focus here on what we've got left. We've got the sear and we've got the hammer. So we're going to take our sub 2000 assembly dowel, put that inside, put some pressure down on the actual hammer, and then we're going to pull forward on the sear, and then we're going to back out, all right, just to release tension on that hammer. Now we're going to actually pull up on the hammer a little bit and remove the sear and sear spring. And there they are there. So you can see how the sear spring goes in. That little leg interacts with this portion here of the sear. Go ahead and set that stock sear spring aside. You can see how the sear will actually sit in there as well. This little tab facing up, this smooth side going down, and this is the sear hinge pin here. So we're going to go ahead and just set this sear hinge pin back inside. We want those to stay in their appropriate and respective places. It's really easy to get these pins mixed up. We've had a few troubleshooting calls and emails on that, so make sure you keep the pins in the appropriate places. Now let's go ahead and remove the hammer. Just pull straight up and out. Slide out as one assembly here. You can see how everything's oriented. So we've got the strike face of the hammer here. You've got your hammer spring here. You've got your hammer hinge pin with the plastic bushing here. Now let's go ahead and talk about how this is all oriented. You see the loop of the hammer spring is behind the strike face. Here's the strike face. Here's the loop, sits behind it like so. And then you can see the break in the actual hammer spring right here. That's what's going to go down into the assembly during reinstallation. But real quick, I want to talk about this hinge pin and this bushing. Now this hinge pin and bushing, if you were to order them from Keltec as a replacement part, they're going to come as separate pieces. Now this is one instance where it was a huge troubleshooting process with one guy. We were trying to figure out what the deal was and we replaced piece after piece on his sub and we eventually figured out that it was the actual hinge pin here in the bushing. The way that this bushing was situated on the hinge pin, it wasn't a spec, it wasn't in alignment. So just real quick, I'm going to measure it, just give you a couple knowings here. So we've got 172 thousandths of an inch. So we just measured this little portion here just to give you an idea how much of this pin should be sticking up out of the bushing. So 172 thousandths of an inch. So that's a good number to know when we go to actually doing any sort of troubleshooting in the future if we have to. All right, so this assembly, we'll leave it together like so. Let's set this aside for now. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove some of these grip pins. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and replace the long grip pin up front here with the carbon steel grip pin. This little line Put that in facing down, so the line's going down. We've got a little short grip pin here. Gonna replace it with a carbon steel grip pin. So you're gonna go ahead and just put that little lip on this carbon steel grip pin facing down. Gonna drop that in. You got another short one right here. Go ahead and remove that and replace it with a carbon steel grip pin. Little lip facing down. Let's go ahead and remove the barrel while we're at it. Just pull up, barrel aside for now. Let's focus on what we have left. All right, so you can see we've still got one grip pin here remaining. We've got a plastic feed ramp. Just want to point out the feed ramp actually locks in place by this grip pin. So this will be the last grip pin that we put in. This is your upper feed ramp here, okay? Notice how this curved edge is facing the rear. It's facing the buttstock. This sharp 90 degree angled edge is facing the barrel, okay? It's facing this way. All right, now let's take a look at the ejector here and how that's oriented inside the receiver and the polymer. So you can see this sharp angle here is facing forward towards the barrel. You can see this curved, rounded portion is facing rearward towards the buttstock. That's important. Make sure you have this exact orientation. That way there, it won't punch through the polymer. If it's in backwards, it will punch through the polymer and damage this grip. So now let's go ahead and remove the receiver. All right, we've got our upper feed ramp. Let's go ahead and set that aside for a second. And now we've got our lower feed ramp, our plastic feed ramp. Let's take a quick look at that. You can already see 
there is some minor wear on here, right? Little divot there, there's a scratch there. It really holds a lot of carbon. Look at that, crazy. So there's a lot of drag, all right? This is a high drag feed ramp. We're gonna replace it with a very low drag, high speed stainless steel feed ramp here in a second. All right, so, and we left our ejector in place. You can see there's a better view of it. So that sharp, straight edge facing the barrel. Rounded edge facing the buttstock. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and remove this bare aluminum grip pin. We're gonna set that aside for now. Grip pin's gonna go in last. All right, now we're ready for reassembly. I just wanna point out, we're gonna start with the stainless steel feed ramp. I got a polished feed ramp here on the left and a non-polished on the right. Now, they're great. They come out of the machine like this. You could put it in exactly like this and it's gonna be 100% improvement and function way better than the plastic feed ramp. But since you've already come this far and you've done all this work, it doesn't hurt to do another 30 minutes of work, a little polishing, to get that nice, shiny, smooth feed ramp because all feed ramps have machining marks. They're little tiny hills and valleys, kind of like the ridge line on your knuckles. They're like little fingers that grab each round and create drag. This stainless steel polished feed ramp is zero drag. It is 100,000% improvement over what we have in there now. So really take the extra time, do the polishing. I'd highly recommend it. There's really no reason why you shouldn't. There's even a convenient kit here that's got polishing bits and flitz polish in the gloves needed all in one simple single application kit for you to actually do the polishing quickly to your feed ramp. Otherwise, you will get carbon buildup. Those little fingers I'm talking about will build up like this and the carbon doesn't easily wipe off. So I'll even quickly demo it. So it'll just be a matter of taking your flitz polish, getting a little bit on your bit. I'm using an old bit here and this is what the bit will actually turn. It'll turn into black, I mean, it gets filthy, right? And you'll just put some polish on the feed ramp, spread it around, fire this thing up. It is a little messy, it will take a little time, but... And then you're gonna get instant results. So it is fun, it is kind of a nice little project, you're gonna see this thing just shine right up. Now it will heat up pretty quick, and that's why we included the gloves and also to keep all the polish off of you because it will be a little messy. Don't recommend doing this at your kitchen table. You're gonna have a little bit of a mess. But, I mean, it's amazing. It polishes up beautifully. And you can see already, you know, the carbon's gone and it's starting to polish, it's starting to shine. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna wipe off each application of polish, you know, get the excess, the dirty stuff off, and then you're going to put new polish on and keep shining with your Dremel like that. All right, so this is the configuration here before we start the installation. Obviously, we didn't move the ejector, and you know I pointed out this rounded portion's facing the rear here, and that straight edge portion's facing forward. So we take our receiver, and we go ahead and take our polished feed ramp, and we set it in here on the receiver, like so. Now, it will move a little bit, okay, so it's not a little snug fit like the plastic one. I mean, this is a rigid part, meaning that it doesn't flex like the plastic. So that we did have to create a little bit of clearance there. So it will move, but that's the whole point of not putting the grip pin in yet because that's what's gonna lock it in. Now we also need our upper feed ramp, all right? And we're gonna put it in like so. See that 90 degree edge facing that direction, facing towards the barrel? We're just gonna drop it right in and you can see how it's all oriented, okay? And we're gonna just put it on top of the ejector. You can see it's sliding over the ejector, all right? Get it all to line up. And the other thing I wanna point out is, see on this opposite side, there's this little cutout and it's fitting into the mold on the actual plastic trigger assembly. So this portion's locking in place. Got our ejector there. We've got our upper feed ramp. We've got our lower feed ramp. So you're just gonna push it all in place, right? You hear that little snap, it's popping into place, all right? You're moving your lower feed ramp, getting that into position. And once we install that lower grip pin, it's all gonna be in place. So now we've got our carbon steel grip pin, this little line, this notch facing down. We're gonna put that right in here. And this is what locks it all together. Now it's solid, all right? So our feed ramp's in there. Upper feed ramp, lower feed ramp grip pin, everything's pressed together, nice and tight. All right, good to go. I'd also highly recommend watching the in-depth polishing video for the stainless steel feed ramp. All right, so go ahead and take the hammer assembly here. So we've got our hammer, just want to review it one more time. We've got the loop behind the strike face here and the broken end facing down, right? 
and this is how it's going to go into the assembly. So real quick, all we're going to do is replicate that, take your Carbo hammer spring. All right, we're going to go ahead and pull out this hinge pin, and we're going to go ahead and just do the same thing. So drop the factory spring and grab the Carbo spring, all right? We've got the loop behind the strike face, all right? We've got this top of the leg here, right? And then we've got the broken end facing down and we just drop in the hinge pin like so. Okay, we're good. Now we just need to add some of that synthetic grease with PTFE, give us a little extra trigger pull reduction. Just go ahead and fill in that notch right there on the hammer, okay, nicely coated. Now we're gonna go ahead and drop this assembly into this hole here, right? And you're gonna have to get that broken leg behind the actual carbon steel grip pin and then make sure your hammer is fully seated. Really push on that hinge pin. All right, this is really critical. Keeping this hinge pin fully seated during the assembly, that's a big part of it. Now we're gonna take the sear. All right, smooth end facing down. This little tab facing up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna coat this engagement surface right here. So this is where the hammer sear engagement surface is. So this is where they interact and they locate. So we're gonna go ahead and take our synthetic grease with PTFE, put a good chunk of it on there. Kind of dab it in a little bit. All right, nice. Let's go ahead and install that. Remember, smooth in, facing down. Pull back on our hammer a little bit here and drop in the sear, okay? It's fully seated, and our hammer will just rest on the sear like that. Keep this leg of this hammer spring down, back behind this carbon steel grip pin. It may try to pop up on you from time to time. You can put a little pressure on it, okay? Make sure it's fully seated, because it will just kind of bug you here and there during the installation. So it's not a big deal, just something to keep an eye on. Just want to give you a heads up there. Now we're going to go ahead and take our M Carbo sear spring. Installing the sear spring takes a little finesse. We're going to kind of do three things simultaneously. So we're going to get the little leg on the sear first, and then we're going to drop the loop on top of the hinge pin, and then drop that big leg underneath this carbon steel grip pin here. And then we're going to take our small punch, and we're just going to press it between the polymer in the grip pin. You'll kind of feel it just seat right in there, which is perfect because it'll lock it and hold it in place. This sear spring will fly away on you, so make sure it's actually in place, locked, and good to go because this is one that you will lose real easily. So this is why we're wearing iPro here. All right, so now we're gonna install our aluminum trigger guard. Go ahead and take your trigger guard spring and place it in that notch there. It should move back and forth and center up on the hole on the trigger guard like so. This is the appropriate placement. Now, if you've got it in the wrong way, you'll drop it in and it won't center up on the hole properly and it'll also be stuck. It'll kind of just stay in place. And you'll notice there's a gap there between the spring and the actual trigger guard itself. So that's in there improperly. We'll flip it around, we'll get it in the right way. There's some forward backward movement and it centers up on the hole on the trigger guard there. All right, now we'll go ahead and take our index finger, hold it in place, we're gonna drop it right here on this post. So as we're dropping it though, we're gonna get that leg onto the polymer and create tension for the trigger guard. So you can see how that leg is now captured between the trigger guard and the polymer and that's providing adequate tension for the actual trigger guard now. So we'll go ahead and test the movement. Springs back in place. Awesome, good to go. Now we get to install our new aluminum trigger and the M-Carbo trigger return spring. So I just wanna point out, this is how this assembly goes together. We've got our trigger bar here. We've got our trigger bar hinge pin here. We've got our plastic trigger and we've got our stock factory trigger return spring. Notice that the long leg of the trigger return spring is up top and it's resting on this tab here, all right? So that's important. The short leg is on the bottom. So we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna pull off the plastic trigger. We're gonna pull off the factory trigger return spring. And we're gonna take the Carbo trigger return spring, long leg towards the top, short leg on the bottom. And we're gonna rest it on the tab like so. See that? Long leg on the top, short leg on the bottom. Now we're gonna take our M-Carbo aluminum trigger, right? Top hole of the trigger is where that trigger bar hinge pin goes into. Now we've got it all replaced, perfect. Now we need to go ahead and just set it into the assembly. So this hinge pin here, the silver hinge pin is the trigger hinge pin. We're gonna go ahead and drop it on there. So that bottom hole of the trigger is gonna rest on that hinge pin. And as we're gradually dropping it, we're gonna grab that little leg of the trigger return spring 
and we're going to wind the trigger bar around to put tension on the actual trigger. So you see how we just did that real simple and easy to just wind it into place. So that little leg is now captured behind the silver trigger hinge pin. So everything's in place. We'll test the trigger forward, backward. Okay, so if, that, if you don't see how that test actually did fail, and that's why we test it. So you have to make sure everything alignment, right? Alignment is key all the time. So you have to constantly press down on everything. I had to actually press down on this hammer hinge pin here to get appropriate clearance for the trigger bar. So forward, backward, right? Up and down. And after you make those movements, you're gonna have to press down on these pins again. You cannot let them just see how things will naturally ride up. Because the two trigger assembly halves are not put back together yet, everything is literally just kind of held in place. So you've got to be very careful, double check, triple check, make sure everything is in appropriate place and it's lining up properly. It's all about alignment. So we're constantly pushing down and making sure everything's in place. But up and down movement of the trigger bar, perfect. And forward backward movement, excellent. All right, and double check, push everything down in place. Watch that little sear spring. That thing will actually try to creep up on you. All right, good. We're good to go. Now we're gonna go ahead and reinsert the barrel. Take your carbon steel grip in the last long one, that little notch. Go ahead and place it down into the polymer, okay? Then grab your barrel. I'm gonna press out that barrel aluminum grip pin. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and put the carbon steel grip pin through the hole on the site. All right, so go ahead and line it up. Just press it in. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and carefully lock it into place. Good. Try not to disturb all the alignment on everything we've got over here. You know, it's delicately in place. Just do a quick check, make sure everything's good. All right, nice. Now we're gonna go ahead and insert our new extended magazine release. I'm gonna just drop it right in this square tab. It's gonna locate into this cutout here. So drop it right in. All right, it's gonna sit there nicely because of that extension on the other side. So one more check. You can see how everything is just starting to kind of jump up. You know, it's all held together. It's all about alignment, all right? It is very delicate, this whole process, and it, it's actually really important to take the extra second, look everything over, make sure it's in place, upper feed ramp, lower feed ramp, all the grip pins are in place. We've got our sear spring there, we've got our hammer spring here, and the leg is down behind the grip pin, which is good. If it does keep popping up on you, you can press down on it a little bit, get it to kind of take a bit of a set up and down movement of the trigger bar, forward, backward, all right? Pressing down on the pins. We're good to go, okay? We're ready to put it back on. So go ahead, look at your grip, make sure you've got the mag release spring in place, all right? Now we're gonna go ahead and just press it down, line it up. Yes, you can hear it gripping and snapping together. Beautiful sound. All right, if you've got a little bit of an issue here, right, take your little small punch and you can push back on that leg of the hammer spring, apply some pressure and it'll close right up like that, okay? Got a little bit of an issue up here, it's, right? So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna just release the barrel a little bit. We're gonna massage it, kind of get it in place. We want it to be completely flush, want everything to snap together. And the other thing is too, when we start putting the screws in, all right, good. It's gonna actually start locking together as well. It's gonna come together nicely. All right, good, let's put the screws in. Now we're gonna go ahead and install the M-Carbo upgraded 12.9 class carbon steel screws into the carbon steel grip pins. We're gonna go ahead and first grab the two washers. There's two per side, top and bottom here in the hinge points. And speaking of hinge points, I would highly recommend using some medium strength blue Loctite just to dabble do you in both of the hinge points. It has been asked and it's a very good point. These two points, because they do 
act as hinge points, they can back out on you. So since we don't necessarily need to break into the sub all the time, it wouldn't hurt. You'll still be able to get in there no problem. If you use red Loctite, it's going to be a pain to get in there. So really highly recommend blue Loctite. You don't need to use Loctite on all the screws, just these two hinge points is what's recommended. But if you feel like it, go right ahead. All right, snug them up. And flip it over and do the same on the other side. Our two washers, little dab will do you on the Loctite, blue Loctite, for each of the two hinge points. Just a little dab will do you. And if you've got this T-handle wrench, it really helps out. So you'll be able to get all the leverage you need when it comes to breaking those loose later. If for whatever reason you want to do a deep cleaning or if there's another part that's offered down the road. Now go ahead and snug them up. All right, good to go. Now we need to go ahead and push the hammer back. So go ahead and take your medium sized punch and your sub 2000 assembly dowel. Take your punch, lift up on the hammer a little bit, then take your assembly dowel, use it to push all the way back and lock it in place. Listen for the click. Now that the hammer's locked back in place, go ahead and position your sub like so, upright. Take your cross bolt safety. We're gonna insert that now. We're gonna insert the safe side into the ejection port side of the firearm so that the fire side is on the ejection port side of the firearm, the right side when we're finished. So go ahead and insert the safe side. Then we're gonna take our small punch, go through the opposite hole, and we're gonna lift up on that trigger bar. You're gonna feel that interference, and as you lift up on that trigger bar, that cross bolt safety is going to slide right through and you can see the fire side is on the ejection port side safe on the non ejection port side and we're going to go ahead and get our hole lined up for the spring and detent now that we've got the hole lined up for the spring and detent we're going to install that now you can see there's a spring in the detent and drop that spring in first then we're going to drop in the detent now we're going to go ahead and compress it with a razor blade and push it in slightly so that it's captured underneath the polymer. If you push it in too much, you're gonna miss it. It's actually gonna spring out inside and you'll have to remove the cross bolt safety. Now go ahead and take one of your E-clips and slide it right on. You can also use your armorer's wrench to help press that E-clip the remainder of the way on. Nice and easy. Good. Now E-clip on the other side. Take your armor's wrench, press it the rest of the way on. Good to go. So now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the collar or castle nut onto the Sub 2000. Now, what I would recommend is, you see you've got old Loctite 380 in here. Use your screwdriver, scrape it out as best you can. Same with on the actual Sub itself, you've got some of the residue here so scrape that off you can use you know your razor blade just to kind of scrape it off a little bit rough it up or take some sandpaper you know 180 grit or something finer and just kind of rub it off a little bit be careful not to damage your polymer you know you're this is just a real simple little surface prep here don't go crazy with it and then we'll put the loctite 380 on All right, I'm pretty happy with that. You don't need to spend a lot of time. It's just, just an added precaution to go ahead and just do what we can to kind of smooth out the surface as best as possible. Same with the little bit of sandpaper. Don't go crazy with it. All I'm saying is just a little, you know, you're almost just roughing up the polymer just a tiny bit. You know, you just want a good surface for it to adhere to, that's all. And if you don't have anything too crazy there, you really probably don't even need to mess with it. So now we'll go ahead and take our Loctite 380. We'll go ahead and put some dabs on here. You don't need a whole, whole lot. 
you can see this one didn't have a whole lot but if you are having issues keeping it in place this stuff is like crazy glue super glue on steroids so um, you know kind of incrementally add to it you've got a big tube here so there's plenty um, I'm pretty comfortable with that and also being that it is tan I don't want to use a ton because if it kind of leaks all over the polymer then it's going to stain so this stuff does stain and the reason we put it on the polymer first is because if you put it on the actual collar and slide it down the tube it's actually going to dry and leave spots and residue all over the tube I mean this stuff is instantaneous so alright it's on there hand tight then I'm going to go ahead and take the collar wrench Tighten it down. Nice. Good and snug. Alright. Good to go. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and install our single point sling mount, which has got QD functionality, quick detach. Excellent upgrade for your sub. If you don't have a sling option, highly recommend these QD single point slings. Fantastic. These are the MS4s by Magpul. Now, this side locks, alright? That's what we want to find out. If you test this side, it doesn't. So, there's only one side that actually locks. So this is the side that we're going to slide on, all right? We want the locking side facing us. So real quick, we're going to go ahead and back out our screw. You need a 764 Allen key, all right? Now you don't want to back it out all the way. You still want there to be a little bit, you want the threads on both sides. But we're going to take a little bit of blue Loctite, just a little tiny dab down in there just to keep it in place. Blue Loctite is what we want to use. We don't want to use red. All right, so we're going to go ahead and insert this way. Now, because I am filming, I've got to use this piece of wood here. All right, it's just because this rear sight doesn't fold, so we're going to use it like this. All right, you could use the edge of your workbench or a piece of wood if, if that helps as well. So I'm going to go ahead and slide it on. There is this flat top right here, and that's why we're using the workbench. We're going to actually get it nice and level because we have this flat top. It's real easy. So go ahead and just slide it down the receiver. All right, get it towards the edge there. It's nice and level, I can feel it. Now tighten it up. And we're just gonna snug it up first. Because we definitely wanna check it real quick before we tighten it down. All right, nice and snug. Let's just take a look real quick. Oh yeah, awesome. Looks great, nice and straight and level. All right, now we're going to tighten it down. And that's fast. I mean, that's really quick for the extra utility and functionality we're going to get having a single point sling. And the great thing is, too, you can fold up your sub with the single point sling attached, no problem. And that's kind of the whole concept here is keeping it sleek. And another great thing, it'll really tighten up on your collar so if you're having any issues with the collar staying on there this really cinches down on it so it's another added kind of security feature it's gonna be nice and tight and snug and secure um, the other thing is to give your collar about five ten minutes for that Loctite 380 to dry before you put this on and start moving it around at least give it some time all right awesome all right so now for the final reassembly and this installation is complete so we'll go ahead and take our bolt head and our bolt Made them together like that, go together like a puzzle piece. And then you can read the caliper on the side, and we're going to insert it into the receiver now. All right, I want to keep that hole lined up in the bolt inside this track on the receiver so that the double finger charging handle can fit in there. Okay, ride it forward, then take your recoil spring, insert that. That's actually what locks the charging handle in place. All right, now take our buttstock, insert that, find the setting of your choice. Most people leave it fully extended. Go ahead and put the buffer in. This little indentation goes in first. Then take the stock pin, position that underneath the butt stock. All right, push in on the buffer and use the weight of the sub to actually push it all the way through. There we go. Now that the installation's complete, let's do a function check together. Charge it, place the weapon on safe, pull the trigger. Nothing, good. Put it on fire, pull the trigger. Good, nice. Charge it, release it, listen for the click. Perfect. Oh man, that trigger pull feels amazing. Nice. All right, go ahead and let's test out our extended magazine release as well. Take an empty mag, throw it in there, just see how it functions. Beautiful. Awesome. Let's see what kind of trigger pull reduction we got. 
Four pounds, 13.9 ounces. A sub five pound trigger pull. That is awesome. Let's just take one more to confirm. Five pounds, one ounce. Now that's one heck of a trigger pull reduction, all the way down from nine pounds to five pounds. Really impressive, and we're really happy with it. We're really excited to hear what you guys get for a trigger pull reduction as well. It's a fantastic firearm, really fun to shoot. Just really amazing for the price point, not to mention all the accessories and upgrades that are available for it now to really customize it and make it your own. So as you can see, not a really hard project. You can do it in under an hour, or at least I did to film it. But really excited to hear your feedback and your results. If you're not a member of the MCarbo Facebook group already, we highly recommend that as well. Great group of guys. Guys that are really excited about shooting, upgrading their subs, and a wide variety of other firearms. I'm excited to hear your feedback. There you go, guys. As always, happy shooting.